Hey guys, Ryan here to talk about the Zord of Ryan, the Max Solar Zord from Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. If you've ever had a ranger share the same first name as you on the show, it's quite a strange, bizarre feeling, like you don't expect it'll ever happen. I was therefore really pleased that the Ryan we got in Power Rangers had a unique set of powers exclusive to America, the Titanium Ranger does not appear in Japan's Sentai equivalent, and although he left pretty much as soon as he joined, I was pleased that he had a decent enough storyline overall, and the suit's really cool and that they were able to give him a Zord that, while probably the weakest individual Zord release of the season, it more than makes up for it with an excellent combination mode and an interesting tale of its own, perhaps more interesting than the toy itself. Talking then the toy history. So how was this thing used in Japan? Well in 2000 it was known as Liner Boy and was not a manually controlled Zord, which to be fair it wasn't for most of its time on Power Rangers either. We saw it being controlled remotely with the battle booster. Apparently within the Japanese equivalent the AI which controlled it was kind of sentient, it had a voice and that's probably why its movements in the show are often seen to be quite fluid, dynamic. It moves at pace and speed that the other Zords just don't. Of course, for Power Rangers, we had it rebranded as our Six Ranger Zord of the Season. Now, this of course would be the Titanium Rangers only Zord of the Season, compared to the Lightspeed Rangers who all get three each. You kind of have to wonder how far ahead Bandai America had to box this thing up, because the Titanium Ranger on the box is just an illustration, almost like an artist concept. It's not even a photo like the main five Rangers get actually adjacent to it. Though I suppose that picture came from Japan. So, this illustration and one liner was kind of all Bandai America had to work with at the time. Another funnish exclusive for America, ours contained a CD-ROM data Zord on compact disc for your Windows machine. Other variations of this technological foray came with the Power Rangers Mega Battle figures. I can't seem to get it working anymore but I do remember it being rather boring. Talking the design. And I think it's an interesting one because what do you count this sword as? Its main design inspiration apparently is yet again based on a bullet train, much like Rail Rescue 5, which does give it a sort of train mode in scale with the Rail Rescues of the previous release. The overall white colour scheme helps provide a really nice colour counterbalance to the black of the Rail Rescues as well. But is it a Rail Rescue Zord? because actually its wings fold down and all of a sudden it's a shuttle. It also tries its best to be a bit more curved, going against the overall bricky look of the season. And I would say its ultimate trick is being able to combine with the five main zords of the season, the rescue zords, as the Lightspeed Megazord, and it being the Titanium Ranger Zord, should we consider it one of the main zords alongside those. Then of course you've got the fact that it's capable of space travel, much like the forthcoming Omega Zords were. So it kind of provides this cross section across the whole line, which is really unique. The shuttle was flanked by the also Millennium Solar Panel Obsession. The Head of Warrior mode is extremely reminiscent of the Power Rangers in Space helmet design. It being such an oddly proportioned robot is explained by it breaking apart into eight pieces of armour, leading to yet another of the most unique looking two Megazord combinations of the series I'd say. This one with lots of firepower with ten blasters on there. The Lightspeed Solar Zord combination had the power to absorb and deflect attacks, which was just so awesome to see. To me at the time it really seemed to bulk this thing up into more of like an Ultra Zord position in that there was just nothing the baddies could do to thwart it. The differences to the Japanese original, and fortunately very few yet again, and the one main one is actually something I can really get on board with. The stickers, once again, are the main difference between the Japanese and the American releases. So when the wings are folded up you see the Titanium Ranger's M symbol, but in Japan that was actually followed by the word Max Liner to go along with its name in the Sentai. Now obviously that is in English, there's no reason why it couldn't have come over as it was, but because they changed the name to the Max Solar Zord, of course they nixed it for the toy stickers. It's interesting to have reversed from my original sticker criticism because this is actually a sticker change that I'm fine with. In America, unlike Japan, there's actually some missing paint detail on the wheels. Technically you could apply it yourself. Other than that though, there's absolutely nothing major that I can see that changed from Japan to America. On to what's bad about it then. I think the massive shame for the Max Solar Zord is that its legs don't come apart. Annoying as well, after singing the praises of Super Train being a carrier Zord with separate legs for a change, now we have a Six Ranger Zord where once again the legs are one piece. 
I think it really ruins the personality of the Zord, which is seen as this flexible, really quick, speedy guy on the show. And then the toy just doesn't look like that at all. It just looks like this big brick, which is missing some functionality. Bandai did, of course, release a action figure version of Max Solar Zord at the time with its separate legs. And if you think it was just the combination that was holding it back, well, the Super Mini Plot proved that theory wrong in 2020 when they released a version of Max Solar Zord or Liner Boy where the legs were able to separate and it was able to achieve all the combinations that the original deluxe toy could as well. The legs not being able to split apart is just a symptom of a transformation that is just lacking overall. There's no long and short about it. This thing should do more than what it does. Going from the shuttle to the warrior mode is really unsatisfying. And I think the show was quite clever to rush through those sequences because they couldn't pretend that this thing was anything more than it was. And what it was was very simple. Speaking of things that could have been designed better, why couldn't the motion of elbows be on the inside of the arm rather than the outside? You end up with this strange visual where it looks like it can bend its arm backwards. It would have been way nicer to have had that flexibility for its warrior mode. Because of the transformation, the warrior mode head does rotate, but yeah, not how you'd want to. You can kind of get away with one ratchet and some angle of photography that way, but you can see it's not as elegant as just being able to rotate the head. As with many toys from this generation, time is being bad to it. The arm is getting very loose. Clips are breaking. They're legitimately just crumbling in your hands. Two broke just while I was filming this video. Uh, I have tried super gluing one of the shuttle pieces back together, but it looks like I've lost it along the way again. I've had to use blue tack in place of the freshly broken arm clip to stop it sagging when it's in cannon mode or it's shuttle mode. It is annoying that the arms don't clip on anywhere, they just sort of hang loose. I don't like how you just rest the piece against the shuttle head on the back. It doesn't seem that well thought out. Fortunately, everything is holding together just, but we are on the cusp of it starting to be more annoying than not. If you are looking to buy your own Max Solar Zord to complete the combination with the Lightspeed Megazord, just ensure it has all the pieces. I think one of the easiest ones to miss because it plays no part in the Max Solar Zord's shuttle or warrior mode is the new helmet for the combination. This is actually stored on a hidden port inside the feet of the Solar Zord. I think it's a slight shame as well that the cutout for the Lightspeed Megazord's visor is actually molded on, but maybe it just didn't work to make it visible, maybe it just got lost in the combo, or maybe it was just cheaper to do it this way so they didn't have to leave the gold kind of chin strap as a cutout piece. I really think the main problem with the Lightspeed Solar Zord are the hip cannons. They're just always in the way. You want them to be able to fold around the back and they just don't. I did try and take a screwdriver to the hip cannons just to see what it would have looked like if those cannons could have been taken out of the way and I think it's much better. While not as elegant a solution as being able to swing them around the back of the Megazord like you could with the Astro Delta Megazord, you can actually pretend that this thing has a bit more mobility than the toy allows. Super Mini Plow was able to solve this problem as well by making the arms detachable and swappable with a default arm piece. But yeah, I think this shows what could have been so what's good about it then? Well, I think this is more emblematic of the era rather than the toy, but there's some really nice materials in use here. From the shiny kind of holographic quality stickers, both blue and gold, to the use of chrome for the cannon tips for the Lightspeed Solar Zord and the arm blasters, both of which are only really visible in the combination mode. There's no benefit there if you're just using it as the individual toy. And of course, the thruster effect for the shuttle mode. Could you even imagine Bandai America or Hasbro in this day and age putting chrome on the underside of the toy when it's out of sight? For the Lightspeed Solar Zord combo, which, oh hey, I managed to fix my Pyro Rescue 1 arm with a lot of screw detachment. I just needed to get deep enough into Pyro Rescue 1 where I could find the piece that it frictions against. Mine was naturally broken, but in my spare Pyro Rescue 1, it was fine, so I just swapped them over. What's cool about this though is that the piece is exactly the same on the left and right arms so even if you were to get a second Pyro Rescue 1 with the same broken right arm just take the clip 
out of the left arm and then put it back in your Zord's right arm. Lightspeed Solar Zord is undoubtedly one of my favourite double Megazord combinations from Power Rangers history. After the fantastic Astro Delta Megazord combination, it was nice to get another one which really dressed up the default Megazord in a completely different way. It also uses all the parts of all the Zords. And when together it feels remarkably solid and well combined. But yeah, it's kind of one big brick, but it feels like a really powerful brick. Of course, it also adds some much needed height to that original tiny Megazord, putting it back on par with standard Megazord sizing. The finisher with the two hip cannons having drawn power from either the sun or the attacking monster was yet another in what is becoming a long line of double cannon finishers, but this time given some mighty blaster backup, including the two at the lightspeed Megazord's ears, giving them a 10 cannon salute for finishing off anything that stood in its path. The back of it, I suppose, could have been its weakness in the show, but the front of it is just dressed up so well, and you just wouldn't want to mess with it. Yeah, this is one that I just keep returning to. It's a real high point, I think, of the Zord line. Of course, the Solar Zord combines with the Super Train to create the Super Train Solar Zord. There's no front clip on the Solar Zord, so it can only ever be at the front of your train. I think that's probably because of how loose-fitting the shuttle compartment is. Obviously with the wings up it looks really in keeping with what the Super Train originally was, but that's kind of not what you need it for. The real benefit of Super Train Solar Zord is that it can pull the train up into outer space. But hey, more on that next time. Max Solar Zord is an interesting Zord that somehow manages to fit in and traverse the functions of all three Megazords of the season. By being the same size as the Super Train, the same space capable variety as what follows, and able to combine perfectly with the main Zords of the season. I think it is a Zord that manages to overcome its shortcomings, though I do wish that it's one that could have been realised better. What do you guys think of the Max Solar Zord then? Pretty useless on its own? Really only there for the combos? Or do you think it's absolutely fine? Even though it wasn't really designed as a six Ranger Zord, though you have to wonder if Japan expected America to use it as one. It does fit the mould that's been established with six Ranger Zords. And yeah, the fact that it can be operated in two different combinations with two different Mega Zords does make up for its lacklustre warrior mode. So guys, do subscribe if you haven't already. There's still two more light speed retro reviews to come. Follow me on Instagram at Power Instagram, And yeah, see you later.